there's nothing worth more that will never come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and no shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your breath. of his goodness. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your prayer. Would you give him a clap offering and praise right now? You can be seated for a moment, if you will. We, got, we have prayer requests that we need to present to you, or bring to you, and... Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Gina, use your prayers today. Connie, uh, Story, remember her. Um, there was uh, I, there's two ladies that I work with. It just kind of happened. Um, on Monday, the kids weren't there, um, but we had to go in and work. The staff had to, it was a teacher's work day, and so we were working, and I was in the office that I work in by myself. Um, 
and the print, interim principal came through, and we were talking. Her husband's a pastor, and she found out that I was a pastor, and so we're talk, we were talking and talking about the Lord and God's goodness, and I just shared Gina's testimony, and about that time, a, t- a teacher walks in. And so I continue to talk, because I'm not ashamed of the testimony God has given us, but I also don't want to be offensive, and so I kind of shortened it, and the principal turned and looked at the, the teacher and said, did you need to talk to me? Because she just kind of walked in on our conversation and stood there for probably about 10 minutes. And she said, no. She said, I, I'm sorry for staying. I know that was rude, but my sister has metastatic breast cancer. And when I heard him telling the story of his wife, I couldn't leave. And she started crying. She said, I, we need hope because the doctors have given us none. And uh, the principal looked at me and kind of winked and went on because she knew I was about to do some ministry. And I just testified to her, the teacher. And I told her, I said, my church is going to pray for you. My wife and I are going to pray for you. I talked to her for about 30 minutes after the, the principal left. And so we're going to put her and her sister on our prayer list. I left the, her sister's name in my other backpack, but I will have it Sunday and give it to you and I'll put it out on the prayer chain. But I want you to remember this because the doctors have said there's nothing more. We, you know, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's moving around. And in the eyes of humanity, it doesn't look very good. But we serve a God Amen. who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or imagine. Amen? So if you'll remember that with me, there's another lady that's battling cancer and I've talked to her I testified to her about Gina's testimony, our testimony. And, uh, you know, it, it's just an opportunity to share what Jesus does, what he can do, what he will do, if we'll have faith and believe and trust in him. No matter what happens, it's important that we have faith and believe and trust in him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are there any other prayer requests that you'd like to make? No, yes, Sister Lisa. I- Jenny? Jenny. Are there any other prayer requests? Yes, Tyler. Uh, my sister, one of our principals at school, she's on FMLA right now, but her her dad was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and so we're just praying last week. Um, he has it's in his duodenum and his uh, liver, I think. So we're just and she's an only child, so she's What, what's the dad's name? Uh, I don't have his dad's name, but her name is uh, Dodie. Dodie? Yes, sir. Yes, Verna. Yes, you saying that and what you really shared after school, we were there. Lunch every day, Heather had a concert at noon. Several people had never heard Heather. And Praise God. I think, um, and then my prayer request, Heather and Shrew, if y'all would just read a prayer for them, they both need prayer in their bodies, and then my little Danny Ray, that they should read it from Missouri. She's not even a year old. Uh, Anna texted me early, early this morning and said, hey, folks, please pray. But she's laying in very high temperature. And so it's such a good thing that they're getting ready for this, my two girls. Yes. Any other prayer requests? Anyone? Yes. Pastor, I want to ask a question. My friend, Mike Scarato, he passed away on March 26th from a brain or a a cerebral aneurysm. I want to pray for his wife and his two daughters. Okay. Lift them up to the sun. Okay. Remember him. Anyone else? Any prayer requests? I'm going to ask you to stand.
And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer over these requests. Then we're going to do our declaration. And then I've got some scriptures the Lord laid on my heart. And then we're going to have prayer for one another. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. We just lift up these names, these requests, these needs. Father, we call them out to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We know, God, Lord, that this is, we're not just speaking hot air. We're not just speaking words, but we are in faith speaking, making our requests, our petitions known to you so that you would answer them, Father. Lord, we speak your word into these situations, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We make that declaration, Father, of your word over these situations, God, that your word would take trump these situations, Father, would overcome and overshadow and overwhelm these situations of sickness and, and hurting and, and the different things that have been brought up, Father. Lord God, for those that are in this place who are dealing with difficult things right now. Lord, we just pray for them, Father. Lord, we pray for those who are watching uh, online, God, that you would just touch them if they have a need. Lord God, that you would minister to that situation, that you would minister to that circumstance, Father. As we call it out to you, we know, God, that you're able. God, that you sent your word, Lord, to heal our disease. Father, that you have given us all that is necessary to appropriate the things that you have given by Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit. We give you glory and honor and praise in the precious name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. 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 We're going to do our declaration. If you have it. Oh, she's got it up. Good. Thank you. Um, 2024 Empowered Declaration. Uh, John, John 16, Acts 1 and 2, Galatians 5, 22 through 25. If you haven't read those, I'm going to encourage you to go read the whole chapter of John, Acts, John 16, two chapters of Acts 1 and Acts 2 and Galatians 5, 22 through 25, because we are focusing on being empowered by the Spirit to do these things. Are you ready? I declare that through the power of the Holy Spirit in me, I am empowered to live like Jesus, to walk according to His Word, and to be a witness of Jesus Christ to all the world. Amen. Do you think that's possible? If you do, lift your hands and thank you for it right now. Father, we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated for just a minute. The Lord gave me four, uh, four verse re references to talk about it, and then we're going to pray for, for needs. Um, I, I just felt like this is the direction that the Lord wanted us to go. The first one is found in Psalms 103. If you have your Bible, I would encourage you to turn there with me because we're going to read through the whole chapter of Psalm, the 103rd Psalm. Um, it's a praise for the Lord's mercies. It's a Psalm of David. I love this Psalm. I say that about every scripture I talk about. I, but I love this Psalm. Uh, because, this Psalm because of what it says. David starts off, he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Would you say that with me? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now turn to somebody and say, don't forget what you have in Jesus. Don't forget what you have in Jesus in God. That's what this verse means. Say it with me. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3 tells us what he's going to do. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Turn to somebody and say, everything. everything. He forgives everything. He heals everything. He forgives everything. He heals everything. All that, you get, I could preach for a while right there. He forgives everything and he heals everything. Mm. Say it, say it out loud. He forgives everything and he heals everything. Say it with me. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Lord, I know you heal my diseases. Verse 4, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Hmm. Turn to somebody and say, he changes me from what I was to what he needs me to be. All right? That's what it means to redeem your life. 
You're going to say all these with me, so just get ready. Are you ready? We're going to say verse, verse 4. Who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, man. I don't know if you get that. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Mm, mm, mm. Can I tell you that there are some things in life that are good for you to eat, and there are some things in life that are just good to eat? They're not necessarily good for you, but they're good to eat. You know, chocolate cake probably doesn't have a lot of redeeming qualities. But, oh, man, it's good to eat. Amen. Come on now. Can I get a witness? Amen. Green beans, to me, have no redeeming qualities, but they're probably really good for you. Why couldn't green beans taste like chocolate cake? <laughs> okay, I don't need you literalists changing things. I'm trying to get across something here. The things of God taste good and are good. Amen. Sometimes they're difficult. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't like, I, I, as a young kid, I didn't like steak. When I was a kid, little kid, I didn't like steak because it was tough. It was hard to chew. It was hard to take in. But as I got older, I understood what a steak was. And that's my cut of choice today. I'd rather have a steak than ground meat any day of the week. Okay? I, I just, I, I like it. It's good. You see... As we get older, we understand that things that are good for us can taste good too. The things of God are good for you, and He renews your strength, your youth, like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all, all who are oppressed. Say, oh, well, you didn't say verse 5 with me. You ready? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. That means the devil can't keep you down. I said the devil can't keep you down. The devil can't keep you down. You ready? Verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. We're going to read those two together. Verse 7 and 8. You ready? He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger, for, uh, his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Amen. We're going to say that. Somebody, somebody needs to hear that right now. Because even though we are in the state of grace, and we're living in the, in the age of grace, there's a lot of Christians who live under condemnation. Because they can't get past what they did. For some reason, they've lost the idea that God, the blood of Jesus Christ, is greater than their sin. Is greater than their mistake. God's grace and the blood is greater than your big, biggest worst sin. Come on now. Verse 9 and 10. We're going to read them together. Ready? He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For I love verses 11 and 12. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as, as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Are you ready? We're going to verse, say verse 11 and 12. For, ready? for as high, for, excuse me, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Mm. I'm, I'm trying not to preach. I really am. 
Because this is prayer and praise, and we're going to pray. Verse 13 and 14. As the Father pities His children, so the Lord pities those who fear Him. For He knows our fame. He remembers that we are dust. He knows exactly who you are. He hasn't forgotten you. You ready? Verse 13 and 14. As the, as the Father pities His children, so the Lord pities those who fear Him. For He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and it's gone. And its place remembers it no more. Ready? As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and it's gone. And its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him. And His righteousness to children's children. To such as keep His commandment or covenant and to those who remember His commandments to do them. Oh, I love this. Verses 17 and 18. Say it with me. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him. And His righteousness to children's children. To such as keep His covenant and to those who remember His commandments to do them. The Lord has established His throne in heaven and His kingdom rules over all. Can you say that with me? The Lord has established His throne in heaven and His kingdom rules over all. These last three we're going to say together. Are you ready? Bless the Lord, you His angels, who excel in strength, who do His word, heeding the voice of His word. Bless the Lord, all you His hosts, you ministers of His, who do His pleasure. Bless the Lord, all His works, in all places of His dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Would you just lift your hands and bless His name right now in your own way? Would you just bless the Lord right now? Would you just take a moment and bless the Lord? We've read His Word. We've de de declared His Word. We've proclaimed His Word. Now we're going to bless Him. Father, I just bless Your name. You are worthy of our praise, God. I bless You and I praise You and I magnify You, God. There is none like You. Lord, I exalt You. You are on the throne. You are high and lifted up. Hallelujah. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. If you'll turn with me to Psalm 107. We're just going to read uh, about three verses, four verses in Psalm 107. Psalm 107, verse 19 through 22. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to read it together. I know we're doing this twice. It's taken twice as long, but we're not in a hurry. I just feel impressed of the Lord to do this. Verse 19, 105, excuse me, 107, verse 19. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Are you ready to say that with me? All right, let's go. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destructions. Oh that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. And his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And declare his works with rejoicing. Hallelujah. Would you just give him thanks and rejoice right now over him Father. We thank you and we praise you and we rejoice over you. We thank you Jesus for your good works God. You sent your word. It healed our disease. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 50, excuse me, Isaiah 53 is our next verse, 1 through 5. Isaiah 53, 1 through 5. I want to read it, and then we're going to read it together. Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Can I tell you, there's all kind of reports in the world. There's all kind of messengers with messages that don't necessarily line up with the Word of God. They're trying to get you to buy in to their message and their gospel, their doctrine, their, their 
whatever it ha- they have. But I want to tell you, we used to sing a song, whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. What is the report of the Lord? I want to tell you what the report of the Lord is. It's right here. This is his report. The doctor can give you a medical report, but he can't give you a supernatural report. The doctor can tell you what he thinks and he can diagnose you, but he can't tell you exactly how to fix it all the time. But God knows because he created you. He fashioned you. He put you together. David said he knit me together in my mother's womb. He knows exactly what every molecule and every cell and every strand of DNA in your body needs to do. And he, he's not afraid to do it. He's already purchased He's already purchased it. Whose report? Or who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of the dry ground. And this is prophetically talking about Jesus. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes... We are healed. Verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We've just come through the the resurrection season. And and if we were in the time of Jesus Christ, uh, after that Easter Sunday morning or resurrection Sunday morning, uh, his disciples still were not real clear as to what was going on. They still didn't have a clue to, to as to what really was transpiring. But I want to tell you something. There were things set in motion on that day on the hill of Calvary. And on that day uh, in the tomb or, or outside that tomb in the garden. Things were set in motion that are affecting you and I today. We have the power of Jesus Christ to move and function and live by the Holy Spirit in us. To do the things that our declaration says because... He took it upon himself. He bore our sins. He bore our griefs. We're going to say it together. Are you ready? Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him... There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Would you just lift your hands to him right now and thank him for that. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you that by your stripes I was healed. In Jesus name, by your stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. By your stripes I am healed. Mm. By your stripes, God, I am healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. This is Peter really kind of restating what we just said in Isaiah a little differently. But he's saying the same thing. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Peter was speaking in a past tense 
Isaiah spoke in a present tense, but Peter said it's already been done. It's already been done. Turn to your neighbor. Tell him it's already been done. What needs to be done has already been done. It's already been done. It's already been done. It's already been done. It's been paid for. We just have to lay a hold of it in faith. Are you ready? We're going to read it together. 1 Peter 2, 24. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Say, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. For you were like sheep going astray but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Would you lift your hands one more time and thank him right now. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, God, for your goodness and your mercy, for your loving kindness. Lord, for all that you have done and all that you are doing in our midst, we just give you glory and praise and honor in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask her to start some music softly um, over the loud system. Uh, the speaker system, and we're going to just meditate on the Lord for a few moments, and then I'm going to ask you to come. We're going to pray for needs. We're going to pray for your need. We're going to pray one for one another's needs. Because I don't know if you know this, but I need you. I need you. I need your prayers. I need your strength. I need your support. I need your friendship. I need your fellowship. I need you. I hope you need me. Not because I fill the pulpit, but because we're a family in Christ. Working together, supporting one another. We don't always agree about everything. But you can't pick your family. I didn't pick the physical family I have. I was born into it. I have two brothers. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're not so great. But I can tell you this. If I ever get in trouble, despite anything that we might, how we might feel toward one another, they would be there. I, I have no reservations in saying that. They would expend whatever energy and resources necessary to help me, if possible. Because they didn't choose to be my brother. They were just gifted with it. You and I have been gifted with this to be brothers and sisters in the kingdom together. It's the gift of God. I didn't get to choose you. You didn't get to choose me. But I'm thankful for you. And I need you. And you need me. And you need one another. And so we're going to lift one another up today. I really feel like that God's going to do something in here in, in a way of answering some prayers, some needs tonight felt that all all coming up to this so I want you just to lift your hands we've read the word we, we know the word we, we've read it we, it we took a little longer something in my spirit I did not pre-plan this I did not know this but as as I was exhorting you just a few seconds ago someone said in your spirit someone in this place said in your spirit what's the use the Lord Holy Spirit showed me that you came tonight expecting nothing because you're at your wits end and I think you probably use that phrase because I keep hearing that over and over. You don't know what to do and you don't know how to turn and you don't know where to go. 
don't know who you are. But I know the Holy Spirit stopped this moment for you right now, right here. To tell you and declare to you that it's not over until He says it's over in your life. Don't give up hope. Don't throw in the towel. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see. Mm. Thus saith the Lord, stand and see what I will do by my spirit without your help. Let me move. You stay out of my way and I will do great things on your behalf for your faith and your trust and your obedience in me. It has already been purchased by my son. And this day I declare to you in this moment that I have not forgotten you. You are my child. Trust in me and hear my voice. Oh. Ah. Mm. Lord, I lift my hands to you. I put my faith and my trust in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you're in this place right here, right now, you have a need if that word was for you I wouldn't be sitting there I'd get up and I'd walk to this front and say I need some people in this place to agree with me that my faith would be strong that I would see what God wants to do in my life that I will stand in the shadow of his wings and let him be God I want to pray with you. I'm going to invite you right now to come. Get up from where you're sitting and come. Maybe you need a touch in your body. Maybe you need a touch in your home. Maybe you need spiritually need something from the Lord. I'm going to invite you to come as well. Jesus name let us pray with you <clears throat> there'll be some others that'll come up and pray <clears throat> there's several in here that need to be up here let's just come hallelujah thank you Jesus there's others that need to come up here and say Lord here I am Lord here I am I don't know what to do I certainly know how to do it. God, I know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I ask, all I imagine. Anything that I could think of to do or work, I trust in you. I need some brothers and sisters in, of the faith to come and stand behind these and to pray. <clears throat> if you believe, if you got faith to believe, I believe. I believe in a wonder working God. I believe in the power that I preach about. I believe that He moves in the supernatural. I believe that nothing is too big for Him to move, no mountain. I believe there's nothing too great for Him to accomplish. I also believe nothing is too small that he doesn't care about. I believe he cares about the smallest details and the biggest obstacles in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to begin to pray. Church, if you're not up here and you're not praying, uh, just pray at your seat. But please be in prayer. Worship and pray and seek God. Find his presence right now. Hallelujah.